Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. I welcome you all to a daily quiz video for today. Let's begin with the very first question on your screen. Consider the following statements regarding appointment of judges in the Supreme Court of India. Number one, the collegium system does not provide any specific criteria for testing the candidate for the post of Chief Justice of India, because of which it leads to wide scope of nepotism and favoritism. Second. The Supreme Court introduced a collegium system holding that consultation really meant concurrence. Third, judges of the higher judiciary are appointed only through the collegium system and the government has a role only after the names have been decided by the collegium. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here would be D. All three are correct. As you know, the question about appointment of the judges in the Supreme Court of India has been a matter of discussion between the Supreme Court and the Government of India, especially over the past few months, where the Vice President of India and the Law Minister making arguments that the Supreme Court should reduce its role in the appointment of the judges and the government should also have a role to play. Now, the recent matter is about the Supreme Court actually recommending the names of five judges to the Supreme Court and the government not really deciding to go ahead for a long time. The government in fact in the past multiple times has sent the names back to the collegium which the Supreme Court has not appreciated. Finally after all this to and fro the government has cleared the names of five judges that were recommended on 13th December 2022. However, apart from this, the decision on two other judges is awaiting. Now, what does the government do actually? Government says that we do a background check of the judges. We make sure that they are qualified enough and that they're trustworthy enough to be in the top court. The Supreme Court, on the other hand, says the government is just delaying the process since the government does not have any power to stop the appointment of such judges. Next, question number two. Which of the following will soon be named the world's first heritage university? Nalanda University, the Harvard University, Vishwabharati University or the Takshashila University. The correct answer here is Vishwabharati University. So UNESCO has announced that they will be giving the tag of Heritage University to the Vishwabharati University, making it the world's first living heritage university. As you know, this university is now over 100 years old. It was founded by Rabindranath Tagore in 1921. The vice chancellor of the university said that the university is going to be declared a heritage university and it will be the world's first heritage university. The university is spread across 1130 acres of land and it was registered as an organization in May 2022. It was Avinda Tagore who donated some of his own property, including his land, some bungalow to the society. That is how this was formed. As for UNESCO, in 1922, Vishwa Bharti was inaugurated as a center of culture with exploration into arts, language, humanities, music and these reflect the diverse institutes that continue in educational programs. So it's a great use for India and Indian education system going forward. Next, question number three. Consider the following statements with regards to Antrix. Number one. Antrix Corporation Limited Bangalore is a wholly owned government of India company under the administrative control of the Department of Science. Second, it is a marketing arm of ISRO for promotion and commercial exploitation of space products, technical consultancy services and transfer of technologies developed by ISRO. Third, it is incorporated as a private limited company owned by the government of India in September 1992. Which of these same statements are correct? The correct answer here is D. All the three given statements are correct. In simple terms, Antrix can be considered as a marketing arm of ISRO. So as you know, ISRO also gets a lot of orders from nations around the world. For other nations also, ISRO provides services such as launching their satellites, making their satellites, etc. These orders are mainly used by ISRO to earn foreign exchange and Antrix usually ensures that these orders actually come to ISRO. So it works mainly as a marketing arm, it promotes the activities of ISRO. They also give consultancy services. So if there's a space organization of some other country that needs certain help from ISRO, Antrix will be the one who will make that happen. It is incorporated as a private limited company, but it is owned by the government of India. The reason why this is in the news is because as you know, the Devas Antrix deal has been in the court. There have been questions raised over it. The Antrix Corporation Executive and 
the executives that work for Devas Multimedia have been fighting out a case in the court. And now the Supreme Court has said that PMLA charges, that is Prevention of Money Laundering Act charges, will be dropped against the ex-ISRO executives. Next, question number four. Which among the following is the official state bird of Rajasthan? First, the Great Indian Bustard. Second, Sarah Screen. Third, Indian Pea Fowl. Or fourth, the Great Hornbill. The correct answer here is A. The Great Indian Bustard is the official state bird of Rajasthan and it has been in the news for various reasons. Now it is in the news because the Supreme Court has appointed a committee some time back to look into how to preserve the population of the Great Indian Bustards. Now the problem here is simple. The Great Indian Bustards that are found in Rajasthan, nearby their habitat area, there are some electricity lines that are actually at some height and it is argued that when these birds try to fly, many of them get electrocuted due to these wires. So these wires should be replaced. Now this committee has said that to protect the great Indian bustards, about 800 km of proposed power lines in the Thar and the Kutch deserts of Rajasthan and Gujarat should actually be rerouted or it should be made underground. This will be about 10% of the length of all the wires. So basically the question was on about 7200 kilometers of overhead lines. Now the Supreme Court committee has said at least 800 of it has to be changed so that we can protect them. There has been a lot of debate about the dwindling population of the Great Indian Bustards. Some of them have even crossed over to Pakistan. That was also in the news recently. Next is a previous question from 2018. The term two-state solution is sometimes mentioned in the news in the context of the affairs of China, Israel, Iraq or Yemen. Pretty easy question to answer. This is Israel, as you know, the two-state solution which is preferred by many countries, which say that where Israel is right now, there have to be two nations. The land should be divided between Israel and Palestine. Right now, Israel wants to take all of the land. It has actually ensured that most of the people of Palestine are displaced. Many countries who want this solution say that they are in favor of the two-state solution. Others say that no, there is only one single country that deserves to be in that area, that is Israel. India also, for a long number of years, has said that we are in favor of the two-state theory in terms of Israel. Next is a fact of the day and today we want to discuss about magnetite. Now what has happened is recently geologists at Jadavur University found out that there are certain magnetic elements when they were actually looking into the dust in the terms of pollution that takes place roadside. This study is in the area of environmental magnetism which is magnetism as it depicts the impact of climate change, pollution and environmental footprints on magnetic materials present in environmental samples such as soil, dust etc. The study found out that the amount of magnetite was proportional to the traffic on any given road. So more the traffic, more was the magnetite actually found in the road, dust, road, gravel, etc. Meaning that these kind of materials are now coming onto road either in the form of emissions or some particles from the vehicles themselves are actually the source of these materials such as magnetite. So magnetite has been found which is a very interesting discovery because more the traffic more is the quantity that it is actually found all across the states now i hope all of you know magnetite actually is a mineral and one of the main ores of iron it is one of the oxides of iron and it is attracted to magnet and thus can be magnetized to become a permanent magnet itself it is usually black or brownish black with a metallic luster and the small grains of magnetite are very very commonly found in igneous and metamorphic rocks as well. The IUPAC name is iron oxide and most commonly used chemical name is ferrous ferric oxide. This is it for today's daily quiz video. Thank you so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel if you have not done so till now. Thank you.